Okay, today's session is to show you the difference between using a band for doing clams for strengthening versus activation when you're injured or in pain. So these things are obviously color coded in physio. We have you know, yellow for easy and then it goes red harder green even harder, it's similar to the TheraBands. Now, with glute strengthening in the gym and in training, you can even get fabric bands which are even harder. Now, they're really, really good for getting your glutes stronger. So, say you're using a strong band, for an example, if I was gonna do a clam in a bridge position, this, this is definitely a strengthening exercise, okay? Now, that's happening a lot in the community, a lot in the gyms, a lot on social media, and that's fantastic for glute strengthening, but in physio, we dial it back a little bit because we're dealing with people who are either injured or in pain, and they simply can't do that. Some people can't even get up into a bridge position, so to, to be able to do that sort of thing. Okay, and usually the band's a little bit too strong, so they're compensating a bit. So for the, if you're one of those pe persons that is struggling a little bit with that exercise, but still wants to progress to that, to work on your glute size and strength and conditioning, then here's a tip for you to dial it back a bit. So go down to a light band, it's the easiest way of doing it. Some people, we don't even use bands there if they're really, really weak, but go to a light band. now. I'll just give you a bit of a heads up. With these light bands, you're just gonna make sure they're flat. But we usually start people on their side for their stability. So we usually get them down at this, working on that way. And a lot of it is about maintaining a stable trunk, a stable core and waist, and stop moving around. That's one of the biggest things, we, because we wanna be proximal stability here before we even move at the hip. Okay, but today's session is for people who can't actually lie on their side. Now some people have, say, a bursitis in their hip, right? and they might have hip arthritis, they might have problems that they can't lie on one side, and we regress them to back onto their back. Now this is also a good option if you're going to go forward into a bridge. So in this position, instead of doing two out, okay, because remember it's not a conditioning and strengthening thing, this is bringing it back to activation. Instead of doing two out, what you've got to try and do is keep one stable and move the other one. Now, as soon as you move your leg, you can't let your pelvis go. So one's got to stay stable. You've got to try and turn this on, keep this tight and core here while you're still breathing, and bring this one out. So I'm actually learning to stabilize through this hip and move this one, and then bring it back. Now, if you watch my pelvis here, if I go too quick, I'm gonna move. So this one is not about going quick. And the reason why people can maintain stability here if they do two at the same time because they don't have to move. If you have to keep one still and move the other, it's a lot harder stability-wise through here. So this is the challenge. Can I keep this taut and move this out while I'm squinting in the sun getting a suntan? Can I move this one out here and maintain this and breathe at the same time. This is what the low level clam, we call it clams and supine. Can I do that movement and learn how to stabilize here? So this is more about activation. It's not really muscular hard. It's actually hard for the whole system to try and maintain the coordination of all those muscles together to get that working. So then you can gain a little more stability. And I think this is a much better option for people who are a little bit sore or they're recovering to try and get their proximal stability first, then they work on that. Otherwise, they tend to compensate a little bit with the harder bands. They tend to start really working on how having to do two at the same time. They can't learn to do one at the same time. So what you do, if you had mastered that on your back, you could either progress to a harder band, which just puts on a little bit more demand, or and you can go on your side. Okay, so now, I'm a bit more stable here. All right, so this takes out the stability component, but I'm still doing one leg. All right, so on your back is the hardest for maintaining pelvic stability, all right, because I'm using one leg at a time, stabilizing one, moving one. Then I'm working on here, okay, which is gonna work a little bit more on strength, but still doing one leg, all right? That's the key about this physio stuff. We like doing one leg at a time, not two all the time, 
because we walk as humans one leg at a time we try and work on that stability first before we load them up with the strength. So for when you're on your side, make sure you have a look at those other videos on clams where you're pushing through your heels, make sure you're actually clenching your buttocks like you're opening up a clam shell. You've got a front point and a back point of a clam. That's your heels and that's your hips, okay? Those two points are lifting you. Don't think about the thigh lifting you and trying to stretch the band as hard as you can. It's about pulling from the back, getting that external rotation, getting those glutes firing, and maintaining a solid section here so I'm not wriggling around. Now if you think about it, the clam is sort of a exercise or resistant progression of a fallout. So a fallout when you're on your back, where you fall one leg out of the side, it's simply a progression version of that. So it's all working on hip stability, just the clam works on strength as well. See you next time.